Hello, my name is Helen Dickey. I want to share with you some research that I've done on the origin of life. I've been studying this topic off and on for years. I'm convinced that life could not have arisen by chance alone. In high school, I was taught that life started in a warm pond somewhere on Earth. And all the life we see today is the result of mutations and survival of the fittest. This hurt my heart. My heart wanted to believe God is the creator. When Charles Darwin's Molecules to Man Evolutionary Hypothesis and the Spontaneous Origin of Life Hypothesis came out in 1859, DNA was not even discovered yet, nor was the electron microscope invented yet. These did not come until the late 1860s. No one understood the complexity of life in 1859. Darwin's theory, however, became very popular very quickly, and so did atheism. I did a Google search with the words, video, how did life begin, and high school. I did that to see how the theory of evolution is still taught today. Khan Academy was one of the top hits, so I looked at their biology courses to find out what is typically taught today in high school. Here is part of a video made by Crash Courses, which Khan Academy uses. So whenever some species have gone extinct, others have risen to prominence, evolving new ways of living, moving, getting energy. These cycles of living and dying extinction and recovery might seem like they're following some grand design to us humans, but evolution has no goal or plan. It's just following the rhythms of life's dance. My brother John bought my family a subscription to Creation and Later Answers. I looked forward to seeing these magazines, and I read them cover to cover. They helped me believe in God, not chance, as the Creator. Later, I did more research on the same topic. I became more and more convinced that God had to be the Creator, and God should be given the glory. I started to write an article and talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, trying to convince them that God did it. I remember on one occasion asking God how else I could explain to the owner of a local organic grocery store that the DNA of human beings is so complex that there is no way it could have happened by chance. God answered immediately. Compare the number of information bits to the leaves on that huge maple tree in my neighbor's front yard. I found that it would take 6,000 large trees, having a million leaves each, to cover all the information bits in human DNA one-to-one. -one. When my article was nearly finished, I asked God if there was anything else I should write about. He answered me immediately. How complicated is the simplest cell on Earth today? That was something unique. I never read anything about that. Later, I found out nothing could be so revealing. Thank you, God. A biologist at foundationsrestored.com helped me by editing, and we published two flyers. In July 2019, I had a medical procedure that required lying still for an hour, and they offered videos to watch. I chose a documentary on bees. They showed beautiful pictures and gave in-depth descriptions of all the amazing parts of a bee. The final conclusion was a statement, isn't chance amazing? That really got my goat. It is God that designed all this, not chance. This is not fair. In January, 2024, I gave my first talk at my church in Virginia. Now let's look at a couple of the smallest cells alive today. Here is E. coli. Each one of these hot dog shaped pieces is one E. coli cell, only about two microns across taken with a scanning electron microscope. These little cells don't look very complicated, do they? Let's look at another. See the little balls in the center of this red blood cell? These are bacteria that cause sheep to get a lung disease similar to walking pneumonia that humans get. These are among the smallest single cells known today. They are only 1 16 millionth of an inch across. Here's a close-up. They don't look very complicated either, do they? But one scientist, David S. Goodsell, did a watercolor illustration of a cross-section of them. Wow, that looks more complicated than you would expect, doesn't it? Now, let's go back to the E. coli. One of these little hot dog-shaped cells has 4,400 genes. 
and 4,600,000 base pairs in its genetic code. Wow, I never expected it to be such a high number. But what is a base pair? When we look at a diagram of the DNA helix, the number of base pairs is equal to the number of rungs in a ladder because it refers to the two pairs that connect together on that rung. A group of scientists headed by J. Craig Venter asked how complicated the first primitive cell was. To get some idea, they studied the least complicated cell found today. They tested each and every gene it had by removing the gene to see if the cell could still live and reproduce. If the cell did not seem to need the gene, they knocked it out, creating a simpler cell. They went through all the genes and found out the least genetic material necessary for a single cell. The resulting bare minimum cell was still amazingly complicated. It had 473 genes composed of 531,560 base pairs lined up in a special code for directing all its biological functions. In terms of 14-point lowercase c's on a piece of copy paper covered with c's, how many pages would 531,560 base pairs need to cover all of them with c's one-to-one? -one? 151 pages. These are not just simple, repetitive items like c's. Four different bases connect in a precise way to direct all the biological functions of this cell. Anything with less genetic material did not survive or did not reproduce. Like computer code, it is very complicated. It is obvious to me that intelligence, not just chance, is required to invent the code and then make it work. And this is not just the DNA components that we are talking about. When we talk about the whole cell, probably only about 6% of the dry weight of the entire cell is DNA. The other 94% is also amazingly designed and organized as well. How could a primitive cell, so vastly complicated, just show up made of random molecules by random chance, which just happened to be there in perfect amounts in one tiny space less than a micron across, and line up together perfectly with each piece having no means of locomotion? It is impossible. Now, let's look at the human genome. A human genome, the genetic material in the nucleus of every cell in your body, is said to have three billion base pairs. You have a mother and a father component, one helix on top of the other. So that means you actually have six billion base pairs. How many sheets of copy paper with 3,520 C's on them would you need to cover six billion base pairs one-to-one? 1,074,545 one? 1, pages. Divided by 500 papers per ream, you would need 2,149 reams. Since each ream is two inches thick, multiply by two to get how many inches you would need, and divide by 12 to get how many feet you would need. 358 feet. A football field is 300 feet long. You would need more than touchdown to touchdown of reams standing upright like books on a library shelf, side to side on a football field, to have enough C's to cover six billion base pairs in the human genome one to one. Actually, the upright reams would be two feet short of the entire field, since the end zones are 10 yards. That is a lot of C's. Each human DNA base pair is in its own precise location and is part of an enormous and extremely complex program containing code that directs the human body to change every minute from conception to natural death. This is my nephew's son when he was a baby. His genome directed him to look different today at age four, and he will look different years from now. Let's do some math. How many base pairs need to be added to the genome of the simplest cell possible to get the genome of a human being? So the human being subtracts the simplest cell would mean you would need 5,999,468,440 base pairs added to that simplest cell. This number is actually silly mathematically because of the significant digits. The base pairs, all these numbers, are really kind of meaningless when you compare it to such a large number as 6 billion. And this number is practically 6 billion. Keep in mind that adding base pairs is a process that would have to discard unimaginably vast numbers of mutations that did not work, keeping only the useful changes. The Smithsonian says that the earliest life forms we know of are about 3.7 billion years old. That means that, on average, there had to be 1.6 useful mutations, 
adding 1.6 useful base pairs every year, with no intelligent guidance at all. Humans could not have happened by chance alone. The only explanation we have is that God did it. No one, including Darwin, knew how complex life and its DNA really are. Human beings have this tendency to believe what the crowd believes, to follow the fad and the crowd. The world today believes in chance and evolution. But Jesus said when he was on the cross, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. When we think falsely and it affects our life and what we do, we can be forgiven by Jesus. I conclude that we are created by God and not by chance. And may God be praised.